host this with Bug Life, um, the 2023 Irish Entomologist Conference. There's a bit of an echo, is that all right? Okay. So um, for those who don't know me, um, my name is Helen James, and I'm Senior Curator at the Museum. Um, I'm going to start off by giving a little introduction to the natural science collections at the museum. So um, the collections date back formally to the formation of the Belfast Natural History and Philosophical Society back in 1821. And um, these were joined by the Belfast Naturalist Field Club in 1863. The collections were first housed in um, College Square in North Belfast. And then in 1910, the collections were taken over by the Belfast Art Gallery and Museum. And then the new buildings where we are now were established in 1929. It became established as a national institute in 1961, and this brutalist extension was built in 1972. The emphasis of our collections are on the fauna and flora and geology of Ireland, as well as some international provenance. In 1998, the museum merged with three other museums to form what we now have as the National Museums of Northern Ireland. So Ulster Museum is part of that. And in 2006, a big event happened. The collections were all moved from the Ulster Museum because of a major renovation in the museum. And that resulted in um, the dry collections all moving off to the off-site store in Heron Road, where they're still currently residing. And the Spirit collection moving to a porter lab on the grounds at Coltra, where that is still in place. And one of the problems, particularly with the Heron Road store, is that the collections became less accessible because they were sharing space with artworks and all sorts of highly precious items. And so the collections became less well used than they had been. But fortunately, we are getting past that now and moving on to a new, new period. The collections have an early foundation, way back to the 1700s, actually, this, um, even though they were only formally gathered in the 1800s. John Temp Templeton is a well-known figure, known as the father of Irish natural history, and he discovered a number of new plants not recorded in Ireland, as well as this extensive seaweed collection, which we have in our collection, and um, we see an example of that there. And... Um, much of his work was published after his death by his son. William Thompson is another well-known name and produced the first comprehensive list of Irish birds and also a large collection of marine algae, which we have in our collection, numerous publications. Then there was a lineage of Pattersons, four Robert Pattersons in a row, who actually produced some of the most amazing naturalists of the country. The second Robert Patterson and others formed the Belfast Natural History Society William Patterson, his son, formed the Belfast Field Naturalist Club. And then Robert um, Patterson III, who the birds, fish, and cetacea of Belfast Lock. Patterson IV founded the Ulster Fisheries and Biological Association. And all of the collections that they had gathered became, uh, um, were put under one roof in 1904 as a public exhibition of natural history collections. One of the most famous of our collectors was Robert Lloyd Prager. He was the son of Robert Patterson III, um, and um, his daughter, at least, William Prager. And he became one of Ireland's most premier botanists and eminent naturalists. So we have a number of botanical sp specimens collected by Prager in our collection. And we are actually going to be working in collaboration with Glasnevin to digitize all of the Prager collections held by the two institutes so that all the information from that becomes available. Um, that's still a relatively new collaboration and we're gonna be seeking funding for that, but it's a very positive joint venture. Prager was also in instrumental in founding the Irish naturalist. Our entomology collection, we have, it's not a very big collection. We have about just over 90,000 insect <laughs> specimens, collections growing at a rate again. Most are from the UK and Ireland with some of international provenance, such as this um, Peebles collection of Panaceous butterflies. We also have ground beetle collections from Indonesia and many others. We've had numerous people contribute to the collection over time, many still active. And I'm not gonna read all of those, but you can have a glance. And some of the highlights of the historic collections include that by um, Hardeman, 
which is one of the oldest entomological collections in Ireland. And then we have the Brock Pneumonic Collection, as well as Charles Langham's wonderful collection from Fermanagh. And something I love about Langham's collection is that he had, you probably can't see, but tiny little distribution maps at the bottom of each species, which was really innovative for the time. Um, you know, we love mapping and distributions, and I think this is just fantastic. The collections are still housed in many of the cabinets. Many of the collections were bought from previous collectors, and so um, they're still in many of the wooden cabinets that came with those collections. So we're far from the modern standard of having the sealed metal cabinets. And it's a bit of a dilemma as to whether we split these up and put them into phylogenetic order or keep them in the lovely historic cabinets. But, you know, we need to move forward and it's for the debate. But anyway, um, we have much to do within the entomology collection, including getting our database up to scratch with all the records. So endless work. A marine invertebrates department has been very instrumental in doing a lot of groundbreaking work with a number of surveys that I've listed there and still active work with a new nudibranch application coming out relatively soon, the work by Bernard Picton and his wife, Christine. Um, they've contributed a lot to um, the marine knowledge right from the early 1970s, with numerous publications. And I think the important thing to realize is that museums play an important role in connecting the correctly identified specimens with voucher material that people can go back in time and check if there were any changes in names or dubious identifications or a species have split into two, something like that. So um, we have played a really, really important role in providing sound information for temporal and spatial changes. And in that way, contribute to conservation of important natural places. Other invertebrates include um, a big collection of um, snails from across Ireland, the Welsh collection. And we have arachnids, many are unaccessioned still and we need a lot more work. And then the, generally the freshwater invertebrates and losing insects are pretty poorly represented. And that's something that we're working on at the moment to improve. As I mentioned, our spirit collection is in this Porter lab um, and we are currently have plans afoot to develop a proper on-site storage facility for all of our natural science material with laboratory space for which we can, in which we can welcome visitors to come and use the collections. So that's just more of the um, Porter Lab as it currently is, and just showing that visitors are welcome to come and work in our collections. Here we have Miles Nolan from Dublin working on spiders last year, and we have multiple students working with us over time, including. Lauren, who's going to be sitting with us at the moment. It um, does tell you. Molly topping it up does the tell last you. Year. And we welcome students working with us too. The Botany Collection um, is an amalgamation of numerous different collections. And in 1968, the, um, the um, Queen's University Collection joined with us as well to form the collection that we have now. I um, already gave a little bit of an overview of some of the earlier collectors. So some of the most important collectors are from. Prager, Templeton, Harvey, Thompson, and a few others. And as I say, most of the collections are from Ireland, but also others from around the world. So the herbarium contains over 91,000 specimens, um, two thirds of which are flowering plants. It's better organized than the entomology collection at this point. Um, that, that's an, that just shows you the cabinets that um, we have, and um, they, they seal relatively well. Um, so, as you can see, everything is still in the one store and we are planning to move forward with that. We are part of DISCO, which is the Distributed System of Scientific Collections, DISCO UK, and we're the Northern Irish hub for that. And this is a system where all of the museums in the UK are working together to try and find ways to get all of our information digitized and available for research. Um, so it is really helpful, they've given us um, Edinburgh and Wales, some really useful equipment, which is still in the process of arriving. So the way forward, we are digitizing the collections, starting with the herbarium. We need to update our specimen database, which is georeferencing all specimens, which is going to be quite something. We're going to get the store built, as I mentioned. We're still seeking funding for that, but it is definitely a plan that is being considered seriously. And as I say, inviting to have a research lab 
We're going to be targeting focus on undercollected taxa and promote ongoing research and taxonomic training. We're linking with CEDAR in building new species pages for our Habitus website, and we are going to have ongoing collaboration with Disco UK, which is part of a larger organization. In fact, it's Disco is a Europe-wide um, organization. As I mentioned, the collaborative project with Glasnevin, we, we are also planning collaboration with National Museum of Ireland, and we are working also with DERA and NIEA and anyone else who wants to work with us. So that gives you an overview of the museum um, and the, our plans on the way forward. So I thank you for listening, and I now hand over to Josh, who will talk to you about Bug Life.